Uh, I also want to introduce a... Hey guys, welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z and I am not joined by anybody today. We're doing something a little bit different. Um, This is a video that I've uh, alluded to a few times um, and uh, this is going to be a very much informal uh, getting things off my chest and uh, bringing you guys into a little bit of the behind the scenes of what I've got going on. Um, this is my, let's have some real talk type episode. So, uh, I am just winging it here, uh, follow with me, uh, bear with me if I ramble a little bit. Uh, but I think that being a little bit honest with, um, the behind the scenes of what I've got building here and, and kind of what I'm working on is, uh, super important because I've always felt that having an honest and transparent conversation with the community uh, would greatly benefit the community when it comes to how we interact with brands, how we interact with each other, um, how we interact with media, um, all those different things. And so I have a lot, and I've said before, I have a lot of big ideas, a lot of things I want to implement, uh, not only here on the podcast, but on the, so the side by side guys, social pages and other things that I got going on. Um, so let me start with a little bit of backstory. A lot of you know um, and have been following me uh, through this whole process for a couple of years now. And to all those guys that have uh, followed uh, over the years, uh, I deeply, deeply appreciate your uh, follows, your likes, your comments, uh, your support, um, and all the uh, contributions you've made in the discussions uh, over the years on various topics from you know stuff in the garage to you know the pro R to all the different topics that we've had over the years. Um, so back in 2016 uh, was when I had my first Razor. And that was a uh, corporate uh, car. It was kind of like a company car um, from Polaris when I was working for uh, 509 as their lead uh, technical director, not director, I guess, but uh, developer uh, on the in the company. And that was a four-seater Razor Turbo 4. Um, it was pretty awesome. It was the big orange uh, school bus Razor from back in the day. Really sparked my interest into the off-road uh, world and got me into uh, the community. And so uh, ever since then, uh, I started getting more and more into the social side of the off-road UTV community. Uh, started Side by Side Guys uh, that January. And uh, as a placeholder to kind of restart uh, my career trajectory, um, I had been in IT for many years. Um, I had sold my first corporate website when I was in junior high. It was uh, basically a backwards uh, hacked version of the Microsoft <laughs> website that I basically downloaded, um, edited, and uh, uploaded to a new server. Um, and that's how I've kind of lot learned over the years is, is backwards engineering everything and, and kind of going in from um, behind the scenes to figure out how things work and, and how to make things awesome. Um, over the years, I had developed many different skill sets in photography, videography, uh, graphic design, print layout, uh, servers, websites, coding, developing. Um, I was in one of the few first uh, classes in the nation sponsored by Microsoft for um, uh, learning how to code and develop uh, when I was in high school, uh, along with AutoCAD, um, engineering, things like that. So I've always had this kind of like technical mindset. Uh, But back to the story, um, in uh, 2017, January, uh, I started Side by Side Guys. It was a placeholder to reboot, kind of where my trajectory was going. And in uh, late 2019, I went all in and cashed out my corporate, um, I guess, nest egg, you might call it, and paid off all of my debt, bought a bunch of camera gear, got into uh, this thing full full bore. So... um, the idea was was that I was going to build, I was going to take, you know, six months or so to build the Side by Side Guys brand, the podcast, and kind of just focus on building the brand equity and the trust that you guys uh, have in me and, and my reporting of content and news and things like that to then start moving into 
a more um, financially stable situation where social media doesn't make you money unless you become a sellout and become a shill to product sponsor spots. Um, it really helps if you're a beautiful young woman to show products on screen, uh, to which I am the exact opposite of that model. So um, I had some serious ethics going into all of this uh, where I wanted to do things differently than everybody else. And I quickly realized that uh, I was going to have to have a different strategic approach to how I built my community, my, my tribe, um, how I built my business, who I wanted to work for, why I was working with them, uh, what things I wanted to feature, what things I did not want to feature. Um, and so up to this point, nobody uh, has really influenced any of the content that I've made. Uh, most of it has been uh, content that was organically me reaching out to people, uh, like if we were doing a product review, you know, things like that. Um, and, and just an FYI, I do have about four or five of those in the garage right now ready to film. Uh, we have half of that stuff already captured, um, and I'll get into why it hasn't been out yet, but, uh, we're going to be hopefully wrapping those up this week. So, but, uh, back to the strategy here, I know I didn't want to, um, just take basically money or compensation from any brand just to put out content and then have you guys lose trust in what I was building. And so... I really got focused on how is this going to look like in the future, a year out, two years out, five years out, things like that. And then COVID hit. And that really screwed up a lot of things because I had planned on uh, going to all the events, going to meet everybody, shaking hands, capturing cool content, uh, connecting with various communities that being up here in the Northwest, um, I don't really have an opportunity to connect with. And so that really screwed up uh, the timeline that I had planned and uh, I went into that process with, I'm just going to wait it out, continue grinding ahead. Um, you know, my wife had a salon business that got shut down. Uh, there was a business for, you know, like 15 years or whatever. Um, and so not only did I just leave my corporate job, my, my secure financial blanket, um, my wife lost her financial blanket as well. And uh, right after that, uh, she was lucky enough to get sponsored to go back to school and become a medical professional. Uh, and so she's now started a career in medical assisting um, out of that. And so it was kind of a blessing in disguise. Uh, she got out of a career where um, there was a lot of overhead and, and very little income to go into a career where you can uh, go home at the end of the day and, and make a paycheck. So that was great. Uh, but my side of the story continued down this path of uh, really not being monetized. I'm not uh, doing sponsored spots. We're not, I mean, even the podcast that you're listening to right now doesn't have a sponsored spot. And we're basically the biggest um, enthusiast UTV podcast in the industry. Um, and uh, I haven't really pursued it hard to get sponsors for the show because I didn't want it to ruin the authenticity and the voice and the message of the podcast. And that goes with the social channels as well. Um, everything that we put out is ours. We don't reshare content. We don't do what a lot of other brands do where you just simply repost everybody else's content to get eyeballs and hopefully subscribers and then in effectively lose your uh, engagement rates, uh, your comment rates, all those things where uh, that matters more to me is who I'm reaching, who I'm talking to, and the discussions to be had from that content. Uh, coming out of the, the COVID, whatever you want to call that thing, crisis or pandemic or whatever, I had kind of a new strategy of, uh, I need to kind of make this, uh, more than just a one angled, uh, spear. And so if you've been following me closely, uh, you've been, you know, that we've, uh, tagged a lot of times, uh, the off-road media group and, when I first started my business, the uh, business was under the Side by Side Guys LLC. And uh, this last year, I have changed that to be the Off Road Media Group LLC, uh, with Side by Side Guys being a business within that LLC. And so the reason for that was that I wanted to work with the off road community, but I couldn't always work with the UTV community. It wouldn't be sustainable um, to generate content nor 
uh, create uh, financial opportunities for me to um, pay some bills. So, so everybody uh, that doesn't know what it is, the Off-Road Media Group is my focus on the ability to capture content and put it out there in an authentic voice with a team that knows what you're talking about and what you're doing. So the idea being, if you're a small business, if you're a, uh, or, or a bigger business that creates and generates products or services in the off-road community and you need and you need a media company to either help you with creating content, videography, photo- photography, product photography, um, websites, uh, you know, uh, services, things like that, that is a technical uh, skill set that your business doesn't have or you as the owner don't have, uh, I can come in and help you out in those services without necessarily and, and help promote that without necessarily bringing in um, non uh UTV specific brands into the side by side guys channel. And it's hard to do, let's just say some work with um, a moto company as the side by side guys, right? Like they're two different markets um, that don't necessarily uh, cross pollinate real well. And so I wanted to make sure I was working with the off road community because we're, we all work and play in those different niches. But as far as a business side of it, it needed to be different. So the Off-Road Media Group is my media company for development and generation and editing of digital content. Um, It is also the ability for me to do consulting and uh, technical implementation. So uh, an example of that would be what I did with the UTV Takeover last year where I came in and I got them set up on new email servers, new websites, modern websites. Um, if you remember the old takeover website, that was a, a disaster. The new one is flexible, modernized, um, easy to update, easy to have multiple people work on, things like that. Um, and uh, so last year, uh, this kind of leads into that, last year I had taken the opportunity you know, to pay some bills by jumping on board with UTV Takeover as their lead uh, marketing and cynical um, lead. So the idea was, you know, we came to an agreement on some sort of monetary compensation, along with travel expenses, things like that to go to the events. And then I would take care of, you know, the various different aspects of that um, job. So that was basically taking care of the website, the graphic design, social media, <clears throat> um, you know, all the different ads you saw, all the different uh, content. If you went to the events and heard the audio audio announcements of the speakers, uh, that was something that I created and and recorded and and produced. Um, If you saw the printed programs or the electronic uh, programs online, I completely produced and uh, designed all of those. Um, Basically anything that was uh, visual or audio or marketed physical um, outside of like the apparel, um, I had a large part in um, in 2021 for all four for the entire year and all four events. So that was quickly um, a, a job that consumed every waking hour of my life. Um, and if you were to go look back at the timeline of what we were doing on the channel and the podcast and everything else, uh, the output quantity and quality went way down. Uh, in my opinion, the quality went down. Um, a lot of people obviously enjoyed that. Everyone that participated and commented and shared and all that, I, I deeply appreciate that. Um, you guys are the ones that help me uh, continue this um, this storyline. So um, the, the problem was is that I love working with the community and for the community. And so I really enjoyed that aspect of working with TakeOver in 2021. Got to meet a lot of cool people. Got to go to places I've never been to. Never been to the East Coast. Got to go to uh, Virginia and meet a bunch of cool people down there. Um, Never had been to uh, Utah. Um, Got to see that for the first time and experience that. Um, Well, it wasn't the first time I had been there the previous year. But, um, you know, there's there's just things that I never would have done if I hadn't taken that job opportunity. But at the same time, while... I was making some money. It was a very small fraction of what I would normally be making as a consultant or media producer for a business looking to hire somebody uh, to produce that content for them. 
and that's not a ding or um or whatever to take over and those guys uh it's just a matter of the fact those those events are very um expensive to put on um they are the overhead on that is extremely high paying somebody uh normal going rate for something is near impossible um if you're if you want to put on an event of that size so uh so it wasn't a full price gig and it was all year long and it took up all my hours to which I had assumed it was going to take up a partial amount of my hours, allowing me to then fulfill the rest of the time with the building of my brand. So going into this year, uh, the expectation was I was going to go uh, continue with them and and help them through 2022 uh, and then create some more opportunities with the different locations and things like that. Um, and... And I quickly realized that I was a year behind in my business strategy and that I was not going to be breaking even on that strategy by the end of this year. I would be twice as deep in the hole. And so I made the hard decision of realizing that I needed to make a change. And I, I put in my resignation at TakeOver um, you know, uh, earlier this year. And so I'm not the lead uh, marketing and uh social media guy at at takeover anymore. And, and that was kind of hard because I had put a lot, I put a year basically of my life into that project to get them uh, to the next level. And I think we did that. And we changed a lot of expectations in the industry for what you would expect as a sponsor and vendor um, in these large community events. And we started doing a lot of things with, with community education at these events and posting content that really helped a lot of people out And I think that made for a better experience. And to the point of that, like we're even, I even saw other events that I had nothing to do with starting to copy what I was doing uh, with takeover. So that was kind of affirmation that I was on the right track with that project, but I had to make the hard decision. And um, ultimately uh, looking long-term, I can't continue working for less than going rate and being, uh, further and further behind with my str- strategy of building my 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 community, my products, my brands, those things like that. So, made the hard call. It was not the most pleasant conversations, obviously, when you lose um, somebody that puts that much effort into an event and a brand and a company. Um, but it was solely my decision. It had nothing to do with any of the guys at Takeover or any of that stuff. But I had to. I had to make room for my growth. I couldn't continue to remove the time uh, dedicated to it. So now I'm at a point where we're in 22. We're coming out of winter. Things are starting to pick back up. And uh, I need to dig myself out of that hole. So we went to uh, back to the drawing board. How am I going to make this business grow and become something that uh, I can uh, sustain a living off of, pay the bills, support the family, go on vacation. I haven't gone on a vacation and I I don't even know how long. Um, and so what I decided to do was to create a third point of my business. And so I have the off-road media group, which is my parent LLC, which then encompasses, um, all the content creation and hire uh, for hire consulting and, and video work and, and photo- photography work and all that stuff. And so then next to that, I have side by side guys, which is my community brand with you guys, right? This is why you listen. This is why you go to our, our social pages and subscribe and I can create um, a UTV specific conversation there. I can break, you know, news. I can, uh, work with UTV specific partners and brands and uh, community members. But I needed a way to, in my mind, ethically capitalize on that attention, as well as the trust equity built over the years with you guys, the community. And I didn't want to do that in a, a shilling way. I've been approached by a number of different brands to pitch their products or to create content for them in trade for the product or monetary uh, compensation. Um, And I always felt like I just became another talking head pitching a product, um, basically selling out. And And I really didn't feel good approaching that. So 
what I've decided to do is I'm launching a new brand called Dialed Off Road. And Dialed Off Road, the the whole the whole ethos around uh, Dialed Off Road is to get you and your ride dialed in with the best uh, equipment and the best accessories to have your UTV perform the best way that you want it to perform and look and feel and experience because this whole thing of UTV and off-road is about the experience um, and and offer products uh, that you can buy that we recommend that we have personal experience with um, but at the same time I want that to be a transparent support of the community. I want that to be something that builds the off-road UTV community. I don't want it to be just another person making another buck off of a community with money willing to spend it. So my approach with Dialed Off-Road is that I'm only going to work with brands that I believe in. So you've, you've, you've got to have a good, trustworthy, equitable brand along with good, equitable, ethical people working behind the scenes. Um, and there's going to be an entire focus on that. All the brands that I work with are going to be American owned, um, whether that be privately held by a family or, you know, a corporate business structure in the United States that is selling, producing and sourcing their products in, uh, the United States and North America, because with our global economy, it's hard to, have everything come from the United States. So, you know, you might have uh, a manufacturer that makes a product that is, you know, employed and, and, and produced here in the United States. And they might be sourcing aluminum from the United States and, you know, LEDs from Canada and, you know, wire from Mexico or something like that. But the idea is that we're keeping the money in our community, our off-road UTV family. And, uh, so you're not going to see products that are, are a business, you know, that just basically goes to China, goes to the factories and says, you know, what version of this can you make me for the cheapest price? Okay. We're going to make, you know, a hundred different SKUs and then offer that as American products. And that's not what I'm going to support. What I'm going to be supporting are the brands that have, equity in the community, people that have invested their time and their money and their brands into the community. And there are some products that you cannot source out of the United States or North America. There's things like technology, like chips, um, like radio chips. You can't buy an American made radio with American made chips, with American made PC boards, with American made capacitors and and transmission uh, chips and all that other stuff. It's just, it doesn't exist. Uh, unless you hand build them, which is not going to fit in your UTV. So there's going to be brands that do source products from overseas, but it's, it's going to be the idea that the brand is going to have a focus. The brands that I'm supporting have a focus on the American UTV community and business community and the goodwill of building and supporting our American uh, businesses and community members. And that's not to say that we're not supporting the Canadian uh, riders up north or the Mexico Baja runners or any of that stuff. What I'm saying is I just want to make sure that our money stays in our community and that doesn't leave not only the money from our community, but the quality expectations and uh, the ethics that go around uh, a lot of how our community works. So if you look at the off-road community, you know, the biggest thing we've said for the longest time is, If you break down, we're all there to help. If you break apart, we're all there to help you find one, source one, borrow one, whatever. And I want to maintain that attitude into the business structure. And so so the way this is going to all look is that I have the Off-Road Media Group, which is my media company. We have Side by Side Guys, who is the product and news uh, discussion-based brand. And then we're going to have dialed off road where uh, you can uh, online order the things that you need for your vehicle. And we'll try to do our best to help educate and surround that product with educational materials. So you may find a product has just a description with a bunch of content around you know the details of that product. 
but you may also find a, a product that has a video uh, describing how to use it or the benefits of, of A versus B um, or why you should avoid C. Uh, I want to build the idea that you can go to this one place, get your car completely dialed in the way you want it because you were educated on what to buy and how to implement it. And ultimately, I would like to see that grow into a physical experience where there's the e-tail side of it where you can just anybody anywhere around the world or in the United States or whatever can go online, buy a whip or a battery or a, you know, um, a radio or a, a spring kit or, you know, bushings or whatever the case may be. And know that any product on that website, no matter which one you pick, is going to be high quality and backed up by good customer service. Um, Not only from us, but also the brands that made it. And be educated on what you're purchasing. So if you know, like let's just do a spring kit, for example. Um, I'm looking and talking with uh, MTS Off-Road to develop a um, shock tuning program up here in the Northwest where I live in Spokane County, uh, which is Eastern Washington, there's not a dedicated aftermarket UTV shop for roughly 300 miles. Uh, there's, there's one in, um, Sandpoint, Idaho or, or, uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, but they're more of a boutique high end customized builder type shop. They do service and things like that, but they're not, um, kind of like an, uh, all inclusive community brand, uh, that you can get things done with. So um, basically, if somebody were to ask me where I was going to send them to put an aftermarket light bar on their car or a shock package or whatever, there's no one up here for for me to recommend. So looking to fulfill my local need uh, for a physical presence, but I can't do that until I get that ball rolling. So what I'm looking to do is work with partners like MTS Off-Road, Buggy Whips, uh, Sector 7, top tier brands, uh, but that are United United States based companies that source and produce their products here in the States or North America and really kind of invest money back into those brands and those communities that they serve. So in here in the Northwest, if we want to look at a shock tuning package, we basically reference everybody down Southwest that does desert riding in the Northwest. That's not what we do. And so we want to develop you know, not only the the knowledge that's already existing in suspension, but also new information that, you know, writers up here in the Northwest have and have experienced and, and want differently than the guys down in the desert. So I'm looking to develop that. I'm not saying that anything is set in stone yet. Uh, things may change over time. But the idea is I'm going to start dialedoffroad.com as an e-tail experience where we can drop ship you the products from these brands you know, I'm taking a low margin uh, sales out of that. So basically, as a low volume uh, introductory brand, I'm not going to get, you know, awesome margins out of any of this. And I'm not buying in bulk. um, So I'm not getting super discounted rates on the product and then shipping it out to you. Uh, We're going to start this off as a dropship account with these brands to help support them. And then as we start making money, that money will go back into uh, investment into inventory and and all that kind of stuff so we can get better rates. I haven't figured it out quite yet, but I want to make the the financial structure of the of the dialed off road where there's a certain percentage of the sale that gets reserved that doesn't get touched that goes into a savings account where once we have enough money, we can invest that into the community in some sort of like um biannual or quarterly uh, time period, you know, obviously right up front, I'm not going to have any money going into that with, with overhead. But once it gets the ball rolling, we actually start getting that percentage saved up. Let's just say we have $5,000 in the account or whatever. The idea would be that we would find something in the community that needs financial support. So and then donate that in some sort of creative way where we're boosting that part of the community. So the idea, and, and let's just take a number, $5,000. Let's just say we made $5,000 that quarter in that investment account. Um, I'm assuming this will take a while to get to that point, but just bear with me here. So $5,000.
Now, let's say there's, you know, uh, a guy, let's just say in North Dakota that, you know, is a known figure in the community. He's an off-road supporter, puts on lots of events and helps, helps out and volunteers. And all of a sudden his house, you know, burns down and his garage burns down with his razor in it or something like that, you know you know, maybe some of that money would go towards helping him find a new unit or, you know, helping cover some of the costs related to that. Or let's just say there's a, an event in the dunes that is a small event that needs, you know, sponsors and, um, supporters in whether that be content or, uh, advertising or, you know, just simple money to cover the expenses of the event or something like that that's struggling a little bit. Maybe, you know, someone reaches out and says, Hey, these guys are great people. They just need a little bit of help. And, you know, maybe we can donate some of that, um, monetary to them or buy product, you know, at our discounted rate and donate it to that, to that business, to that event. Or maybe it's a charity, right? Maybe there's like warfighter made or, you know, um, some of these disabilities, uh, guys that are helping disabled veterans or disabled people ride off road, Maybe we donate to that or work with partners to support that in some sort of way. Basically, the idea is that the the dialed off road brand, I want it to keep the purchasers, the, the customer base completely satisfied in the product and their ability to pay for the product supports our community inversely with, you know, whatever angle comes up for that um, donation. So I kind of want to make it more than just a business for me to make a bit living off of. I want it to be something that continues to evolve and continues to support the off-road and UTV community. So if you guys have any ideas, any suggestions, uh, I'm always uh, willing to talk and listen. If there's anyone that wants to help us get to this point where we have you know, the structure in place and and the ability to open an actual physical presence up here in the Northwest and and be able to service people's cars and have technicians and bays and and do that. I'm in no way, and I have a lot of friends and a lot of followers and a lot of listeners on this podcast that um, are business owners themselves and and actually have off-road shops and and aftermarket uh, service shops and things like that. A lot of great friends over in Oregon, the west side of Washington, southern Idaho, you know, all over the country that I've met over the last couple of years. This brand, this dialed off-road brand, and in no way is set to compete with those guys. Like I've said, I've already pigeonholed myself with the idea that I'm going to keep this brand focused on United States brands, United States products, United States, you know, or North American sourcing, things like that. Which really does, I, if you go and look, if you go to Rocky Mountain or if you go to Combustion or if you go to any of those places that do high volume online sales, there's a large number, a large majority of that product set that is over, is sourced overseas. And it may be final assemble, assembled here in the United States or it might be marketed in a way that would infer that it's a United States brand. But I'm, I'm severely handicapping my product set by saying that, right? So I want to support not only the big brands that are already established that do American products, but I also want to support the small shops that have small volume products. And so there may be the, the, the shop that has a CNC mill that they're producing, you know, shifters or shift gates or what light bar mounts or, or something that don't have the exposure and the marketing budget and all that. I want to include them in this brand. And obviously there's going to be some expectations about turnaround time and and all that, that has to be clearly communicated uh, from us to you so that you're not expecting to get Amazon delivery next day. Uh, That that's not what this is all about. Now in the future, when we're able to take some of that money that has been earned over the months and invest that into inventory, then we can start offering, you know, the two day shipping and or next day or same day install or, or whatever the case may be. And, I, and forgive me if I keep rambling here and if I've lost your attention, I apologize. Uh, this is really kind of just me expositor, ex- expositating, exposit, having an expository. I don't know how you would say that. I'm not educated enough for those big words. But this whole discussion is from me to you to let you know where I'm at and why 
you haven't really heard from us, from me in the last few weeks. We, we've went to the Mint 400 and that was kind of my last big money to spend on a trip. Uh, I wanted to experience the desert racing scene. I haven't been to a desert race um, and I didn't know what to expect. I wanted to learn from it. I wanted to meet the brands that were there, how the community, um, you know, worked at those events. Um, I wanted to basically, that was kind of the, one of the last experiences I haven't had yet. And I wanted to have that before I focused in on this new direction. So, so to summarize, I'm super busy right now in creating and finishing up content that has been sitting in stagnant in stagnation for the last year that should have been out last year, but it has not been put out because of how far behind I am. And so in this catch up time, I am, I have a handful of reviews in the shop that I'm finishing up this week. If the weather permits, um, in the shop with the high winds that we get at our location, uh, makes it hard to record audio sometimes, but I'm working on it. Um, I also want to get the podcast to be a consistent every week, uh, event. Uh, I also want to introduce a, um, a new live show, uh, concept into the side by side guys off road podcast. And I think we may call it something a little bit different, but it'll basically be the idea that you, the community can participate almost like a call in show. And we can discuss topics every week. So maybe one week we we pick um, the pro R. Maybe one week we talk about the lack of you know transmissions, or maybe one week we talk about horsepower or whatever. But the idea is that you know hopefully I might have somebody join us that is knowledgeable on the topic at hand, and then we can as a community discuss those things and experiences and and all that kind of stuff. Um. But I want to make the podcast and our our discussions together more consistent. Um, but I can't do that until I'm caught up. So I'm working to get caught up. Uh, and then I'm building this dialed off-road website, which is going to be more than just an e-tail site, right? It's it's content, it's blogging, um, it's it's retail sales, it's planning for the future, it's a lot of different things. And I, and I should say. You know, I've up to this point funded everything I've done and not really not really made any money off of anything I've done up to this point over the last two and a half years. Self-funded everything based off of, you know, cashing out of my corporate gig. And I paid off my debt when I did that, and I don't want to build any more debt going into this. And there may be a time where I need to buy a building and land and all that. And I and I and I that's debt, but I'm not considering that the same kind of debt. I'm not having a credit card and buying ten thousand dollars worth of inventory. I'm not having, you know, a line of credit to go buy uh, a new Pro R or or whatever. So everything I'm doing um, for those people that are interested in how the financials of all this work is, I'm building this from the ground up with zero with zero money. So everything I'm going to be doing here from this point out will be based on focusing on no debt reinvestment and building this brand up from the ground up with you, the community, taking your input, making adaptations based off of your feedback and making something unique and special. And I would like to incorporate you, the community as much as possible. So as we start doing, um, excuse me. So as we start moving forward, I want to start in involving the community more and these live shows should help uh, do that and be a part of the discussion. But I also want to build that into the physical world. I want to build that into kind of that car club culture and, and meetups and rides and sp- stuff like that. Um, I've talked with a couple people about maybe doing a state to state ride from the Washington Idaho border to the Montana border and back um, or doing you know, possibly other types of rides where in the past we've heard from Ian and his group going to Idaho and doing a little overland experience on the weekend. Um, you know, you, you've all heard about our BDR trips where we've gone across States multi, you know, for a full week, um, living off of our UTVs. I want to bring some of that experience back to the community where it's more of an everybody can participate type thing. I have some ideas about doing, a uh, special type of um, events up in the mountains or out on the trail where it's it by it's by invite only, but you but you don't know exactly the details until you show up. 
some kind of um, interesting concepts that I'm working on. And so I'm really looking for brands that want to support this idea of building community, building a brand around the community and supporting the community. Uh, so as we get those uh, sponsors on board, uh, those brands on board, uh, we will obviously be communicating that to you uh, when we when we lock those in and start to offer those products. Um, you know, I obviously will hopefully be doing more product focused content where we can do education on the product. And as that happens, obviously, you know, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to ask everybody to go follow us um, on all the social platforms, dialedoffroad.com. Uh, at dialed off road on Instagram, Facebook, um, you know, eventually we'll, we'll be on TikTok and all those things as well. But, uh, but dialed off road will be the product, um, purchasing experience, but also the education side and, um, the informational like decision-making side, side by side guys will supplement that. And we will support that with, uh, product, you know, type of, uh, integrated videos, um, comparisons to other products on the market. And then by no means do we want to exclude anybody outside of the USA market. Like if you are a USA brand, but you have to source your product from overseas or whatever, and it's a good product, there's no reason why somebody shouldn't be able to buy that product. Um, and so side by side guys is, is definitely set up to support that brand and show their products off. Um, if it's a good product, we don't want to just be showcasing bulk buy Alibaba purchased LED whips um, on the channel. We we could care less about those products. I don't think anybody benefits from buying those products. The money just goes overseas. But if you are, let's say you're a brand that sells radios, we know some radio brands in the industry. All those radios get sourced and produced overseas. They don't get made here in America, and it's near impossible to do that. So there's no reason why we can't support those brands that put money back into our community um, and, and and let people know that their products exist and why they should buy them as well. Um, the Off-Road Media Group is set up to be able to support and build some of these brands. So if you're a smaller business that needs product photography, you know, white box, black box, you know, highlight reels, social media content, all that stuff, we can do that and support those businesses as well. And, um, obviously we're not looking to bring on clients that are so big that they consume our entire, um, timeline. But if we can build those brands, make money off of that, as far as like being compensated in a fair and equal way. And then in turn, that money just supports and builds the community in these other avenues. It's kind of like a big wheel of momentum. And I really want to push this forward, this idea, this concept, and ultimately, I'd like to bring these brands to events and to locations to where people can be involved in our experience, the products, the people, the, the, the adventures. Um, I don't see why there's no reason once the ball's rolling and we're making enough money to support itself that, you know, dialed off road and the side by side guys don't go to and, and the off road media group don't go to as those brands to, let's just say, Mud Nationals or Sandsport or, um, you know, Baja or, um, you know, the ice, the ice man challenge race up, uh, up North or, or whatever the case may be and support the community in, in each angle, right. Covering the event, making content, supporting the racers, you know, maybe some of that, that allocation of money can go towards a racer fund where it's, you know, there's an up and coming racer. He doesn't have a tire sponsor. He doesn't have a, a suspension sponsor or something. And we can come in and, and supplement that in a, in a certain way. And that fund could be also open up to donations, right? Like we could take, maybe maybe there's a way for us at checkout where you can donate to that fund where not only is, is a percentage of that purchase going towards it, but you could donate $5 or $10 or whatever. I, I don't know how this is all going to work. I don't know how this is all going to lay out in transparency because I want it to be completely open, but yet at the same time, I don't want it to be, you know, uh, a tool for other people to, you know, dog down on us that we didn't make money that month or, you know, that we didn't invest money that month or whatever the case may be. I don't want it to be so transparent that it becomes a vehicle for, you know, the naysayers. I want it to be transparent in a way that 
you guys as the community can see the money being invested back into the community. So um, anyways, uh, I know I'm rambling. Uh, This is very much a different type of podcast, different type of video if you're watching. Um, Obviously, there's a lot going on on my side. I gotta, I gotta start looking uh, out for the family, paying the bills, and all that stuff. So I'm trying to structure this in a way where I'm not having to go get a nine to five job, a normal job, quote unquote, but focusing all my effort into this vision that I have of building, supporting, and communicating with the off-road UTV community. So, um, anyways, I would love to hear your feedback uh, on some of these ideas. I would love to hear. Um, some of your um, ideas on how maybe this could be different or uh, what you would do in the situation. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to come out right away and just say, well, go get a job. If you don't have money, you know, to support what you want to do, you know, go get a nine to five job and then, and then work on it at night. Well, this is already so much work for one person that I don't have time in the day for, for that. Right. I gotta, I gotta just put, go all in on this on what I believe and what the vision is. So, uh, please, everybody in the community, go follow dialed off road doc, um, at dialed off road, uh, so that we can start to build this, this concept that we can build this, this community resource. Um, and I said earlier that we're in no way competing with, you know, a lot of these other brands and, and shops out there. When we get a customer or somebody that wants something that we don't have, we want to build partnerships with those other shops where we can then send the customer to them. So we're not looking to loot to keep that customer for every single dollar and cent. We're looking to enable them to get the right product for their ex- expectation, whoever that person in the community is. Because if I send somebody to our buddies over at Superior Motorsports or Addiction Motorsports, Power Sports or or, you know, Rainier Off-Road or, or wherever. Our community is not losing the sale, right? If we send somebody to a different shop or a different brand whose business and or product is made overseas and, and the money goes overseas, I should say more specifically, then we're losing that sale, in my opinion. Even though the product's fulfilled, the customer's happy, they got what they wanted, we've lost that investment in our community. So... I would like to work with other shops and other brands that maybe don't have the American focus that we have, but that are still supporting and putting that money back into the community. And and maybe this is a pipe dream. Maybe this is all ridiculous. Maybe next year we'll look back on this as the most ridiculous thing that anyone's ever tried to do. But I believe that it's possible and I believe that we can still build this community even bigger than what it is. We have a huge influx of new people, new riders, new buyers, that are undereducated and loose on their money and they don't know what they're getting into. And I believe that as our community continues to mature, our, our niche in the market starts to mature the brands. And especially, it, we've talked a little bit, a little bit about it in the past, some of the corporate um, consolidation that's been happening. We really have to focus on supporting the aftermarket community so that our community at large continues to grow and be healthy. I don't believe that large consolidation will lead to a healthy community in the future. So I, I, I've i got so many things in the back of my head spinning around that it's hard to communicate them all well. And I hope that on this episode, uh, I've done a little bit of, of clarity on that, a little bit of backstory. Um, content and and updates on how this is all going will obviously come over time. So stick around for those. And, uh, and yeah, I I hope that this continues to evolve, continues to grow and expand into something special. Um, I don't want to just be the guys that podcast. I don't want to be just the guys that, you know, post cool content or scoops or leaks or whatever. Um, I want to grow this into a bigger thing, a bigger community, um, a robust and healthy community. And, uh, and so I, I want to hear your thoughts, your ideas. Um, maybe some of your ideas are the same as my ideas and just, I didn't give them enough equity and didn't bring them up. Um, I want to know what you think. I want to know what you think about what I'm, what my vision is. I want you to know that, you know, where my heart is on this is it's not just, um, another social media account. 
Um, I've had people, you know, say things like, well, you guys make so much YouTube money, you should be fine. I don't make jack squat off of YouTube. So like, this is this is definitely not a moneymaker at the moment, but we're looking to do it to generate money, but also keep that money in our community. And I want to make sure that as a community, community, we are working together to evolve and to educate and um, support each other. So anyways, uh, this has definitely been a weird episode. I apologize for rambling. Um, any cuts in this episode, you know, um, were just basically because I needed a drink of water or I coughed or something. So I apologize for those, but I try to keep this as linear of a discussion from me to you as possible, uh, without any production so that it was kind of just off my chest and honest and everybody could have some insight into what I've got going on. And if you want to help support what the vision is, if you have a skill set or uh, you want to donate some time to help, or uh, maybe you're a brand that wants to get involved, uh, reach out to me in DMs uh, or Zach at offroadmedia.group or uh, Zach at sidebysideguys.com. Uh, that's Zach, Z A C H. Um, you can also. Um, you know, obviously share any of our content that always, that always helps commenting and liking and all that obviously always helps rating our podcast on Apple uh, podcast always helps all those things add up to more exposure, which then creates more reach for us. And that's definitely what we want to do. We want to be reaching as many people as possible with as good of content as possible. And uh, I'm looking forward to the summer uh, as of right now, for those that have been asking, I don't have any set dates to go to any events without anybody sponsoring it because all my time and energy and money has now been invested into this vision. So I don't have the resources to now go travel every month to a new event or a new race or a new whatever. So if you are a brand that wants to get involved by helping sponsor you know, a trip to an event or cover a special gathering or a trip or a new product launch or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm definitely open to those discussions. We definitely want to work with our community to support our community. If you have a new product coming to market, we'd love to help you. Um, if it's a good product, we're not going to just, you know, promote trash, but we want to definitely start talking uh, to you. Um, and we have, we have a lot of ideas on maybe some products that we can produce here uh, in in house that would benefit you, the community as well. So uh, maybe some of those little products that that just make your life easier when you're going to do installs or when you're going to do upgrades or whatever. So um, yeah, I, I have lots of stuff up in the air right now, hoping to solidify a lot of that into action uh, and uh, looking forward to hearing back from you. Uh, and seeing you in the community. So hopefully we can get out to some more shows this year and uh, maybe do some live shows uh, with the community. That would be kind of cool too. So anyways, uh, I'll wrap this episode up with uh, follow us on all the social platforms, both side by side guys, uh, dialed off road. And if you are in need of any uh, media or technical expertise, we do consulting at the off road media group. Um, and our websites are being worked on by me. Uh, so give, give me some time to get those updated. Uh, the side by side guys websites and get a refresh as well. And uh, hopefully everything's going to uh, become quite, quite the monster uh, to maintain and to see grow. So uh, until the next time, guys, peace. Peace.